I want you to think about something that you like to buy and consume. Maybe candy or donuts. It's got to be something that when you buy it and consume it, you like to buy more than one of it, right? Like tacos or french fries, um, possibly um, uh, sodas or something like that, okay? So let's say, uh, let's, go with, let's go with something simple like maybe, maybe pieces of candy or gum, okay? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and understand what we call the law of supply and the law of demand. The law of supply and the law of demand help us understand the mathematical relationship between price and quantity uh, for, for the forces of supply and demand. So over here, I'm going to put the law of supply and then I'm going I'm to write out exactly what the law of supply is. And then right here, I'm going to put the law of demand. And I'm going to write under here, I'm going to write out the law of demand. And then what's going to happen is after we, after we uh, or as we write out these definitions, what we're going to do is these definitions are going to help us uh, draw a picture or a graph of what uh, the demand, what demand looks like as a graph and what supply looks like as a graph and we call them curves okay we call uh, when we take the law of demand and then draw the law of demand on a coordinate plane on a uh, the, the quadrant one what we draw is called the demand curve we call it the demand curve uh, usually because it's, it's not a straight line, it's curvy. I'm going to draw it as a straight line, but understand that it's usually curvy. Okay? Similarly, when we draw the graph of the law of supply, we call that the supply, we call that the supply curve, although we're, we're going to sketch it, we're going to draw it as a straight line, but really it's supposed, to be a, it's supposed to be curvy. That's why we call it the supply curve. And so we have this demand curve and we have the supply curve. And you're going to see the demand curve and the supply curve a lot in this class. And also if you take microeconomics, you'll see them a lot in microeconomics as well. So let's talk about the law of demand first. It's very simple. You like Let's say you like to buy candy, and here's my question for you. Um, and don't just be argumentative. We're thinking ceteris paribus in a very simple way. Uh, if, let's say that you like to buy um, candy bars. Let's say a candy bar costs a dollar fifty, and you buy and you like to buy those. Would you buy more candy bars if the price of candy bars went down from a dollar fifty? to a do, uh, just to 75 cents. So now they're half price. They're 75 cents instead of $1.50. Instead of buying just one or two candy bars, maybe you would buy two, three, or four candy bars because they're a lot cheaper, okay? Um, and the idea that we understand in the economy is yes, when the price of a product goes down, people tend to buy more of it, okay? You tend to buy more of something when the price goes down. If the price of tacos goes down, you may buy more tacos than you would have. You may not eat them all uh, when you buy them, but maybe you'll save them for later. Or a group of people who go into Taco Bell, if they were only gonna buy, let's say, seven tacos, but then they find out that the tacos are on sale, they might buy 10 or 11 tacos instead. So the basic idea that we understand is, that when the price of a product is lower, people buy more of it, a larger quantity. So a, a lower price leads to the purchase of a larger quantity. But a higher price leads to the purchase of a smaller quantity. So for example, let's say the price of candy bars went up to $5 each you may stop buying candy bars altogether. In fact, maybe only wealthy people will buy candy bars if the price of candy bars goes up to $5. I certainly wouldn't buy a candy bar, not for me or my kids, if candy bars cost $5. So I know that I would be no longer willing to buy a candy bar at $5. Would I be able to, find, to buy a candy bar? 
Yes, I'd probably still have $5 in my pocket, but I would consider that there's lots of other great things that I can spend that $5 on uh, rather than a candy bar. Especially when I think I used to be able to get a candy bar for a dollar and now it costs $5, I'm not gonna buy a candy bar, okay? So, typically, when the price goes up, that means that the quantity, uh, it, there's gonna be less quantity uh, that's gonna be purchased. And so here's the definition we're gonna, I'm gonna give you for the law of demand. Here we go. The law of demand says, as the price of a product increases, you're gonna see the word uh, increase and decrease a lot in this class, okay? To increase means to go up, to decrease means to go down, and that's all that can happen to a price, if, unless it stays the same. But if a price is changing, it's, it can only change in one of two ways. It, a, a price can either increase or it's gonna decrease. But what we're saying here is as the price of a product increases, the quantity demanded will decrease. In math, in math, a mathematical relationship in which two variables that are related to each other, when one of those variables goes up and the other variable goes down, that's called a negative relationship or an inverse relationship. So what I'm basically saying here is that the law of demand says that demand is a negative relationship between price and quantity. Negative relationship between price and quantity. And what does a negative relationship look like on a graph? Well, a negative relationship has a downward, is a downward sloping curve, okay, or a downward sloping line. It has a negative slope. When price is higher, so if price is way up here, then quantity demanded will be lower. It'll decrease. Quantity will be down here. So quantity is low when price is high. That's up here. On the other hand, the opposite would be true. If the price was lower, then the quantity would be higher. That would be over here. And that would put a point over here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to connect these two dots. And what we're going to see is this, what you're looking at right here, is, a, is basically what you will see as a basic demand curve. And we, we uh, label that downward sloping line with the letter D to indicate a demand curve. So we call this a demand curve, the downward sloping line. The law of supply, however, is a little bit different. Let me try and explain the law of supply and then we'll write it down. The law of supply is a little more complicated than the law of demand. Let's say that, uh, that there's a company that produces bicycles. And let's say that they sell 200 bicycles every week. Okay, 200 bicycles every week to some other, to some company for, uh, for $30 each. So this other, this buyer, is buying, uh, they're paying uh, $6,000 every week to this company that makes 200 bikes a week. And that company that's making those bikes is using rubber and plastic and metal, and they're employing uh, um, workers to make those bicycles, okay? And the buyer says to, the sell to this supplier, to this producer, they say, hey, people really like your bikes. Okay, they're very popular. We would like to purchase 300 bikes per week instead of 200. Okay, because and they're saying, man, 30 bucks. Uh, we like this price. We agree on this price. We've agreed on $30 per bike for 200 bikes every single week. And now we would like to offer $30 for every bike, but we want 300 bikes per week instead. So here's the problem. The seller who's making these 200 bikes, in order to increase their production of more bikes, 
they're actually going to pay have to uh, pay out more money per bike. Let's say that they're making these bikes. Let's say that it costs them twenty dollars per bike to produce them for the employees, for the uh, plastic, the metal, and the rubber. But to make another one hundred bikes every week, they might have to pay overtime pay to their employees, or they're going to have to hire new employees and train them. The new employees they hire aren't as skilled. They're going to have to buy more rubber and plastic and metal. And it could be that whoever they're buying from might charge a higher price for the metal, the plastic, and the, and the uh, rubber. Uh, because maybe they were already buying the, the stuff, the materials for these 200 bikes. Maybe they were already buying from the, from the seller who was selling it for the cheapest. But now that seller doesn't have any more that they can sell. So this company is now going to have to pay more money for more materials. Not just more at the same price, but more at a higher price. Overtime for their current employees would be another would be time and a half. They may have to open up uh, or rent out another another building or rent out another portion uh, of the space that they're currently renting. They're going to have to pay out more electricity. They're going to have more overhead costs for human resources and all kinds of other stuff. The basic idea that I'm getting at is this, is as a company increases their production, the average cost of producing each of these units goes up. And what may happen is, instead of only costing $20 per bike, it could actually cost go up to $25 or $30 per bike. That it's now going to cost $30 per bike to produce. Well, they can't sell them for $30 each, so here's what they're going to say. Sure, we can produce $300 per week, but we can't do it for $30 per bike. We're going to have to charge you $40 per bike in order to produce $300. We're going to have to raise our price in order to produce more bikes so that we can cover our costs. So what the law of supply basically says is this, is that there is this relationship where between price and quantity that is affected by the cost to produce the stuff they're selling. And here's what it basically boils down to. Go ahead and write out the law of supply. So here's what the law of supply says. As the quantity supplied increases, the price charged must increase as well. The sellers are saying, if you want a higher quantity, we have to charge a higher price. But if we wind up producing a smaller quantity, we can charge a smaller price. Now, when one thing goes up, when one numeric value goes up and the other related numeric value also goes up, mathematically we call that a positive relationship. A positive relationship. And so the idea, the law of supply is basically a positive relationship between price and quantity, and we call that the supply curve. So if quantity supplied is going to be low, then the seller can charge a lower price. But if quantity supplied is higher, then the seller has to charge a higher price. So that's up here. And if we connect these two dots, here's what we get. We get a positively sloping curve or a positively sloping line, and we call that the supply curve. And when we create a coordinate plane with price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis, and we draw a demand curve and we draw a supply curve, we call this a market graph. This is called a market graph graph. And this is a tool that we use in 
uh, economics to try and understand the relationships that occur between buyers and sellers making transactions in a market.